morning. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Welcome to Ignite Church of Atlanta. We are live, hallelujah, and excited about um, worshiping God on today with you, our family. Give yourselves a hand. If you're watching on Facebook Live, welcome to Ignite Church of Atlanta, where we love Jesus Christ with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our soul. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ on this morning. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and let's worship him. He's worthy to be praised. We are so excited to be here on this morning. I don't know about you, but we had a wonderful week. I had a wonderful week. We were able to go to a bishop ball on the weekend, and we are so, so excited to be back home. There is no place like home. I think Darby said that in um, that uh, uh, what is it? Um, Cinderella? And she said, it's no place like home. So we are so glad to be back with our family. And we want to pray and bring down heaven in this house. Lord, we just thank you so much, God. We honor you. We worship you. We give you glory. We adore you. And we just worship you on today. We pray, God, that you be with those who are traveling here, who are watching on Facebook Live, those who are on their way. God, we ask that you bless the service on today. Bless the speaker on this morning, Lord. And Lord, just have your way. Bless the praise team and the musicians, Lord. And everybody who's watching on Facebook Live, God, on YouTube, Lord, we ask that you bless them abundantly. So come on, family, and put your hands together as we stand, hallelujah, and we do our declaration of worship. Hallelujah. Y'all too quiet up in here. Come on and let's worship God. Oh, bless his holy name. If you're watching on Facebook Live, wherever you are, throw your hands up in the air. Hallelujah. And give God a big hallelujah shout. Hallelujah. So come on and repeat after me, family. I will give all my attention to God today. My mind, my body, my soul. My mind, my body, my soul. I will renounce all distraction from my worship today. And I will give God my best praise on today. I will be better. I will be stronger. Because of my worship on today. If you believe it. I want you to say it one more time. I will be better. I'm going to be stronger, y'all, because of my worship on today. Now, I want you to bow down because that's the posture of worship. And just bow down, hallelujah, before all holy, mighty God. As we, hallelujah, welcome our praise team. She's going, they're going to come up, or I should say she's going to come up, and she's going to lead us into worship. Hallelujah. Let's clap your hands for Jesus as she comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, God. She's coming. We worship you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here she is. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Bless God for today. Y'all, God is so good. All miraculous things happen. So if you are coming in here on today, just believe in God that what he says he will do, he will do. He will. You have to be in a place to receive. You got to be in a place to believe him. You got to be in a place to send up praise, knowing that when the blessing, the praises go up, the blessings come down. We thank you, Lord. We bless you on today. Hallelujah. Lord, we come for you once a day. Give God some praise in this place on today. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, 
Father, we thank you because it's by your blood that we can pray in your name, believing and knowing that they are already healed and that we will see them next Sunday sitting right where they always sit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is by your blood that we pray and in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this morning. You know, we are missing a lot of folks today. It's vacation time. Folks are going on vacation. We are glad for those of you who are here and pressed your way. Those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. Please share. Let somebody know that Ignite is on the air. Thank you to our musicians, Josiah, the drummer, Justin, the uh, guitarist. They're holding it down. As you can see, amen. They holding it down, y'all. Our um, organist had the nerve to go to Egypt and leave us here. But that's all right. We still moving forward, amen. And we pray that they're having a blessed time over there in Egypt. I want to get right into the announcements. And the first one is going to be in reference to our Wednesday night Bible study. By now, you are all familiar that we have a Wednesday night Bible study at noon as well as 7.30. We are always, we're also on Zoom and Facebook Live. Our noon Bible study um, is, an ex, um, is an extension of uh, one of the other ministries that I'm going to be uh, mentioning a little later on. But our pastor is doing our noonday Bible study. If you are free at 12 o'clock noon or you have a lunch break, please join us. He is doing a wonderful teaching. We have an exciting time. We are growing, hallelujah, in numbers, and we are also growing in transformation. So join us on twin, uh, Wednesdays at noon, and then Wednesday at 7, um, uh, Wednesday night at 7.30, our um, Ignite at Night is taking a summer break, y'all. Wow, we're taking a break. We're taking a break, y'all. So y'all got your Wednesday night at 7.30 back for just a little while. It's not permanent, amen? So we will be returning in September. So you got the rest of July, the rest of August, and we hope to see you back in September at 7.30 on Wednesday night. Uh, we want to give it up to our facilitators. They were doing, a, they did a wonderful job, amen, on the Wednesday night Bible study. Pastor was using all of the different leaders, um, and if they don't know, but this is part of their training, amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank them for their commitments on Wednesday night. And on Friday nights, we have our prayer power at 7.30. Yeah. Amen. We have our deacon S or deacons, um, Lisa and um, Kelvin Payton. They are our facilitators for the prayer power on Friday nights. We go before the Lord at 7.30 sharp. We're only on for 30 minutes, y'all. Only 30 minutes. So if you are in need of prayer, if you want to send a prayer up, if you want us to pray for somebody, please tune in on Friday nights at 7.30. And Seasons Ministry is what I was talking about. That's an extension of our noonday Bible study. This um, Seasons Ministry is going to focus on those seniors, um, or I should say more mature saints, amen? And we're going to have special things for them, like um, guests coming in to do... Um, what they call those things, nutrition classes and exercise classes, you know, exercises for seniors or the older people like my husband who need to do the exercises in a the chair, they can't stand up. So, amen, we are going to invite um, a physical fitness uh, trainer to come in, and this is all going to be via Zoom, y'all. So please keep that in mind. Wednesdays afternoon, look on our Facebook page and look on our website. That's where all the information will be posted. Amen. And next we have our Kingdom of God series. We got two more Sundays, y'all. We have this Sunday and next Sunday. Pastor is doing a phenomenal um, series on the Kingdom of God. And we're talking about the different aspects of the Kingdom. Who, who, are, who are members of the Kingdom? Who is the King of the Kingdom? And what Kingdom business looks like? So today, um, Pastor will be coming later, and he's going to be doing um, another topic within the kingdom of God. So you want to stay tuned. You want to tell your friends. And also, um, you want to continue to pray for us as we have two more sessions in this, um, in this uh, series, the kingdom of God. And next, we have oh, a way that you can always stay connected to us. You can stay connected to us through our app. And um, if you are a first-time guest, you want to text IGNITE FIRST to 54244. It will prompt you to fill out, uh, I, would, I would call it an information card. 
and we will not bug you, but we do want to keep you connected to what we are doing here at Ignite Church of Atlanta. We have a lot of outreach going on this summer, so we want to make sure that you know what's going on. So please take out your iPhones if you are watching online for the first time. If you, I don't see any first timers here, but if you're watching online for the first time, take out your phone. Text IGNITE FIRST to 54244, follow the prompts, and we will stay connected. And also, you can text hashtag IGNITE to 54244 to stay connected. Hallelujah. These apps are awesome, and it's been really working very well. We've gotten a lot of people who have um, downloaded the app and filled out the card, and so they're able to stay connected um, with all of the things that we are doing here at IGNITE Church. Our theme is the next level up. And so God has been doing some great things here. And we're glad that you're able to stay connected via this app to make sure that you can be a part of this. And now, you if there were any first-time visitors here, we want to welcome you to Ignite Church of Atlanta. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. If you're watching on Facebook Live, we want to welcome you, welcome you for the first time for, to watching us on Facebook Live. You were given a card. Um, a packet, and in that packet is a card, and we would like for you, if you would, please fill out that information, and when we do the offering, if you can drop it in the offering box to my left, no, my right, your left, or you can um, give it to one of the beautiful ushers at the door. Again, this is another way for us to just keep you informed on what um, is going on here, and also to pray with you and pray for you. Now, this one I'm excited about. Amen. Me and Pastor are the only ones excited for the baptism service. Amen. That's our first baptism service, July 29th at 9 a.m. We're going to be assembling at Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, and it is located at 5000 Highway 92 slash 166. Douglasville, Georgia. Y'all, we're excited. This is our first baptism for Ignite Church of Atlanta. Those of you who are getting baptized, you're making history here at, at Ignite. And we're going to be there to celebrate. We're asking all the ministers and leaders who can, please join us on the 29th at 9 o'clock. And you already heard the address. If you need it, you can get it from me after church. But we really want you to support those who are, they've already given their heart to the Lord, but now they're going to show the world by way of baptism that they have um, transformed their lives and they ask Jesus, like, Jesus Christ to come into their lives. So we're excited about that. As there's some rededicating, okay, pastor said there's some that are rededicating themselves as well. So listen, y'all, it's still time. If you want to get baptized or if you want to rededicate your life, by going down in the water one more time. One more time. Just look, um, see me after service and we will make sure uh, you get the, the necessary information. And Blossoming Souls, which is one of the newest ministries. Amen. That's right. One of the newest ministries here at Ignite Church of Atlanta. We are going to be having our second meeting and it will be virtual. We're going to have a guest coming in. The theme is, let's talk about sex, y'all. So, yeah, we're going to talk about sex, y'all. And so, on the 26th at 12 noon, if you uh, want to join us, please uh, reach out to me. I will be posting on our uh, Facebook page, which is Blossom and Souls. We just created that page. And all of the information will be there. We will be on Zoom. We won't be in person. We'll be on Zoom. And we're asking all of you older ladies who know a teenager or, or millennial age, I would say, please invite them. This is really going to be good, y'all. How many know that in this season, uh, we, we need to teach our young children how to be sexually pure. Amen? Sexually pure. So we're going to be talking some good stuff, y'all. Some good stuff. And also, our first gathering is going to be August 13th. We're going to have a Sunday brunch. Amen. So, listen, ladies, stay tuned. The information will be posted on the page, but we will be having our first outing Sunday brunch on August 13th. Amen. It's giving time. Hallelujah. It's giving time. It's giving time. Yeah, hallelujah. And here at the Night Church of Atlanta, we have several ways that you can give. You can give
you by text to give to Ignite Give to 54244. You can also give via Givelify at Ignite Church of Atlanta. And we also have Cash App. And that um, tag would be hashtag Ignite Church Atlanta, the number one. And last but not least, you can always mail a check or money order, and you can mail it to 1421 Woodmont Lane, Northwest Suite 708, Atlanta, Georgia, 31318. If you would, all over the sanctuary, please stand with me as we prepare our hearts and minds to give to unto the Lord. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can govern yourself accordingly by giving um, any, way, any of these four ways as the Lord leads your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. At this time, you can stand in the sanctuary and you can make your way to this beautiful box where this wonderful, a beautiful woman is standing here with that hot pink top on. Amen. Sister, Sister Mondi with our hot pink top. <laughs> Bless the name of Jesus. And if you are given via um, social media, I mean, um, these tech, tech, what is it, technology, you may do so at this time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hey, Brother Al, big country in the house. That's our personal chef, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you. He throws down him and his beautiful wife. That's why I got all these, put all these pounds, and the doctor tell me I got to lose 20 pounds because of big Al. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to pray for the offering. Father, we thank you so much for these givers. We thank you, Lord, for those who are online also gave. Lord, you have been a blessing to a small church. You have really blessed us, Lord God, and we just thank you for each and every one who supports Ignite Church of Atlanta by way of their finances. God, we ask that you would bless them and their cups would overflow. Lord God, do what only you could do. Create miracles, Lord God. Create jobs and positions for our members, Lord. Yes, I'm asking specifically for our members, Lord. They've been so faithful in their giving, and Lord God, let them know that you see them, you love them, and that you will provide for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us to use this offering for your kingdom and for your glory. If you agree with me, please shout a big amen. 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 You may be seated as we call our worship lead praise team up to the um, podium as they come after the um, song is sung, the Somali song is sung. We are going to hear from our pastor, the Bishop Elect, uh, Dr. Michael Giddens. He is going to be speaking on the topic, the kingdom stories, the kingdom stories. So right after the praise singer sing, you will hear Bishop Elect. <laughs> Should I clap back, y'all? All right, he said no. <laughs> We talked about all these things this morning as we were in praise and worship. But those things you truly have to believe in your heart that He is the everlasting God. He is the everlasting God. The Lord is my light salvation. Who shall love me? Who shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait on
on your love. We said I hope on your word. You are the everlasting. If you believe that, can you just stand over the sanctuary? If you're on Facebook Live, just lift your hand.
it's going to be changed. It's going to be imparted. It's going to be my way made. The doors are going to be open. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the everlasting God is resting in the midst of your situation. We started off saying, who shall I be afraid of and who should I fear? Hallelujah, Jesus. Why can I say that with a conviction and determination? It's because we serve the everlasting God. Put your hands together and let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. If you believe that, you can do better than that. Don't be giving them no patty cake. <laughs> no, no. We're praising the everlasting God. The Almighty, the El Shaddai, the El Gabor, the El Elyon, the El Shabbat. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're praising his name. Lift up your voices and give God some glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let praise fill the temple. In the presence of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody need some power? That's why I can be confident in him. Hallelujah. I can see the what? Goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is somebody's word this morning. I got a test today. But I remain. And I will. Let's say that again. Somebody needs to be built up today. I will. I will remain confident, and 
In the midst of that, it isn't just for to come to church so that we can what? Encourage one another as we see the day approaching. So give yourselves a round of applause. Put some claps on that, on that, um, on the Facebook. Hallelujah. But you deserve praise for pressing your way. Amen. This morning. Well, we're going teaching mode. As you know, here at Ignite, we don't ever want you to get so comfortable that you just know what's going to be said, know how it's going to happen, know what's going to occur. Um, the church is not an organization, it's an organism. Amen. That means that just like a person that you don't always know what to expect when you meet that person every day, 
and things change. God moves. So today we want to continue our kingdom, um, kingdom, the kingdom series with kingdom stories. And I'm going to be presenting a lot of information. You are welcome to, to take a, a, a shot of the, the slides that are coming. Amen. Because we're going old school. Somebody say old school. Amen. As we talk about kingdom stories. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. And um, before I do that, I just wanted to show Al. I wanted to show off for him. And I got a special chair from Walmart, too, for the price of one. Amen. And I'm going to be sitting and standing. Amen. But I want to make sure that you can see the screen. And those on Facebook can join us, too. But Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless your holy name, God. You are good and your mercy endure forever. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. We pray, God, as we go through this today, that somebody will be empowered, somebody will be strengthened, somebody will be encouraged to do what you are requiring us to do in the Word. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody say amen, amen, amen. If you're here for the first time, just wave your hand so I can just say amen. Bless you, family. Good to see you. And those on Facebook, if you watch it for the first time and worshiping with us, bless you. You are welcome here at Ignite. Amen. Don't understand that we are a little different. We're a little special. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But we'll love you in the love of the Lord. Amen. Well, today I want you to turn with me. Amen. And it probably would have helped if I had my phone. But we're going to be coming out of Matthew 13, verse 47 to 50. Matthew 13. Verse 47 to 50. Amen. Uh, how about somebody just read it for me? That'll help me. Amen. Amen. How we do that? Y'all see, yo, my wife tried to match me this morning. She can't get enough of me, so she got to try to dress like me. Mm -hmm. Somebody have it. Matthew 13, verse 47 and 50. Okay. Use your mic, sweetheart. Matthew 13, starting verse 47 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet which is lowered into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. And when it was full, they dragged it up to the beach and they set it down and sorted out the good fish into the baskets. But the worthless ones they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw the wicked into the furnace of fire, in that place there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Amen. The word of the Lord has been read. Thank you, sister. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about one particular kingdom story, and it's the parable of the net. The parable of the net. We ready, brother. We're going, we going to get ready. So the parable of the net, first slide. Amen. What you have is just read. And you could go to the next. There's four questions when you are talking about parables. When you're looking at a narrative, when you're looking at a story, when you're looking at a speech, a picture story, um, um, usually it's relating to some type of natural familiarity to develop a spiritual impact. In other words, there's usually a deeper meaning behind the story. And Jesus often explained what the parable meant, usually when the hearers or the disciples asked a question, which means that our faith is not just some mysterious faith, it's not some illogical faith, but it's understandable. Our faith is revealed. So as we discuss the parable, there are questions that we must ask ourselves as it relates to the spiritual and impact of this particular parable. In other words, what is it talking about? What is this story? What does it mean? Who is it talking about? Why is it important? When you read the text, it's important for you to do some investigation because you just don't want to become knowledgeable, but you want to become applicable. You want to be able to apply it. You wanted to see where you are in your life because the story was meant to have a spiritual impact 
in the lives of the hearers. Next slide. So this particular parable is called the parable of the dragnet. The parable of the dragnet is just one of the many parables that Jesus taught. Amen. That talked about the kingdom of God. So a lot of his parables was dealing with the kingdom of God, especially as we relate to the parables found in Matthew 13. And how, why did Jesus speak in parables? Matter of fact, one third of his teachings were in parables. Why? Because people remember parables. People remember a good story because we can relate to it. How many love to hear a good story? Amen. Just a few of you. Just Justin and maybe just a few. Amen. Hallelujah. It, because it can help make spiritual things easy to understand when we can relate it to something that we're familiar with. Something that we understand. Jesus off, also often taught in the open to conceal those who refuse to believe him. In other words, he kept saying they're ever hearing and yet they still could not see the revelation in the story because unbelief cannot discern spiritual revelation. So this particular parable is called the parable of the dragnet. And as you see, it's gonna be called several different par parables. Matter of fact, this parable is only found in the gospel of Matthew. And there's seven parables that's found in Matthew chapter 13. Matter of fact, you see a few of them that you're familiar with. The parable of the sower, which indicates that there are different hearers and there are also different responses. There was the seed that was sown among the road. There was seed sown sold among the rocks. There was seed sown among the thorns, and yet it was good soil. That means that even though the seed is good, only one-fourth of the hearers received it. Amen? And then you have the parable of the weeds, which indicates how the enemy had sowed seeds again amongst the field. Amen? That's a typo. Somebody say, blame his wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Amen. Blame his wife. But there's seeds sown amongst the feeble. In other words, the seeds that are good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But there are seeds that were sown that were bad seed, which were sons of the enemy, the devil. Amen. And the field is the word. And God is going to separate the wheat from the tears in due time. Amen. You see the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast, which indicates how the kingdom is a kingdom that may look like it won't grow, but in time, its growth will be greater than any seed at all. And then you have the parable of the hidden treasure and the fine pearls that indicate the extreme value of the kingdom. So as you can see, Jesus is specific in telling parables about the nature of the kingdom and who is going to dwell in it and who is not. How many know that not everybody is going to dwell in the kingdom? Hallelujah, Jesus. Just because you come to the church don't mean that you dwell in the kingdom. There is good as well as there is bad that comes to church. Somebody say amen. Some of the people you think is going to be in the kingdom ain't going to be there. Hallelujah. And they can wear all different types of colors, carry all different types of articles, wear all types of jewelry, and you're going to say, where are they? And this last parable we're going to discuss today is the seventh parable of Matthew chapter 13. It's a parable of completion that indicates a final judgment is coming. How many know judgment is coming? And it's commonly referred to as the parable of the net or the parable of the fishnet, or the parable of the dragnet. Now, one of the things you have to understand is that those who are hearing would have an understanding of what Jesus is talking about because they were by the Sea of Galilee, so they would understand what fishermen are supposed to do. Let's talk about fishermen. Amen. Can we hit the next slide? Fishermen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Any fishermen, fisherwomen in here? Amen. No, there you go. There you go, sister. I fish too. Amen. I, anything I go after, I catch. I can go to Costco. I can go to BJ. I can go to Walmart. I catch anything I want. Amen. It's already clean. The only bait I need is my debit card. And I can get any fish that I want. Praise the Lord. I know some of you fish like I do. The people will be familiar with the role of fishermen. And there's certain characteristics of fishermen. One, 
is fishermen were hard workers. Fishermen got up early, they worked late, they stayed at work until the net was full. In other words, fishermen were not lazy. And Jesus is trying to make, not trying, but Jesus is indicating something that people would be familiar with because he wants us to get to a place of spiritual impact and truth. In other words, if we are going to be like fishermen, we cannot be lazy workers. Fishermen, in order to sell their fish at the markets, had to speak several languages. In other words, they knew their culture, they knew their surroundings. The more languages they could speak, the more marketable they would be. They didn't just stay in one lane. They didn't just stay in one denomination. They didn't stay in just one way of doing church. They were able to speak to the needs of the people that they need to speak to. Fishermen had to be self-motivated. They had to be entrepreneurs. They had to pay rent for their boats or rent out boats to other fishermen. They knew how to make a profit. In other words, they knew how to get what's invested in them. They knew how to make a profit. They knew how to close a sale. They knew how to persuade you to buy what they were selling, which means they were proactive. They knew they had something that was marketable, and they need to be able to share it in the language that people would be able to hear it. And, and, and we also have something to market. We have hope, we have joy, we have love, we have salvation, and if you do not feel you have anything marketable, then you would not share it. Fishermen had to be able to endure hardship. They had to go to the sea. They had to go to the waves. They had to go to the sun. In other words, they understood that what they were about to do, they were endeavoring to do, wasn't going to be easy. They had to be patient. They had to wait on the fish. They had to develop a strategy to catch a school of fish at the right time and place. In other words, they had to be knowledgeable about the fish they were going to catch. In other words, they cast a wise net. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. In other words, they had to spend time with the fish in and out of the water. A lot of times, the only times we speak about Jesus is in the church, but we don't speak about him when we're outside the church. Amen. We'll put all types of foolishness on Facebook, but won't put one scripture, won't put one word, won't put one testimony. Amen. We'll back that thing up, but won't invite nobody to church. Somebody say amen. amen. Fishermen had to be able to dive deep to catch the fish. They could not be afraid to get dirty. They were not afraid to get amongst the stink and the slime. They were not afraid to get their hands dirty. They were not afraid to share their failings and their authenticities. Amen. Hallelujah. And one of the things you have to understand, when you realize how much God has brought you out of, it helps you in humility keep you from self-righteousness. You know, self-righteous folk always talk about what you need to do instead of what we all need to do. Amen. Fishermen were not afraid to get naked. They would often strip off all their clothes to dive in the water to cast their nets. So fishermen were not afraid to be transparent. Sometimes you got to be all things to win some and catch some. Some of the things that you've been through, even the things you might not be a, um, proud of, is going to help somebody who was in the stuff that you was in. Hallelujah, you get out of it because you were not afraid to say, I was once like that. I once went through that. I once thought like that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen? I'm sick of everybody telling me the mountaintop stories, but don't tell me about the pits and the valleys and when I tried to get up and I fell down over and over again. Amen? Fishermen were not afraid to be transparent. And what I love about this, um, 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 Sister Shereen, is fishermen had to work as a team. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody say teamwork makes the dream work. To catch the fish in a drag net, it would take at least, listen to this, 15 men per boat to cast the net. A lot of times we cannot do what we need to do because we ain't got enough people. Not enough people on station. Amen. Could you imagine going out to fish and you got a boat allowed for 15 people and you only got three? then how much are you going to be able to catch? Woohoo! 
Uh, in order to catch the fish in the drag net, it would take at least 15 men per boat to cast the net. So the more men you got and the more boats you got is going to determine the catch that you get. And some had to row. Some had to cast. Some had to pull. But all of them had to sort. They knew how to share the burden. They knew how to ask for help. And they knew how to share the credit. Lord have mercy. Somebody say that's kingdom minded. Amen. How many know the vision of our church? How many know the three cores of our church? I'm asking a question. Crickets. Uh-huh, we hear something. We hear a few. On Facebook. <laughs> a boat got to go somewhere. If you don't know the vision of the church, you don't know where your boat's loading. You don't know what you're catching. What's the three core vision of the church? Let's go church. Oh, crickets, crickets. No, that's a good fit. That's a good vision statement. But we are kingdom minded, discipleship oriented. And we are community focused. Let me say it again. Because when you're casting your net, somebody's going to say, well, what, do your, what are y'all stand on? We're kingdom minded. That means that we're not about just us, but we're about teamwork. It ain't just our church, but any church to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to work together to advance the kingdom of God. And we are kingdom minded. That means we walk as kingdom citizens. We walk in kingdom power because we belong to the king. Somebody say kingdom minded. What is the second part? Discipleship oriented. That means that we've got to grow. That's why we are where transformation happens. You got to grow. If you don't want to grow, amen, this is going to be a difficult place for you. Amen. And when I say we got to grow, that includes us. Amen. We got to grow. But in order to have discipleship, which means to help people grow in faith, you got to evangelize. That's why we stand on Matthew 28 and 19, Dorian. Therefore, go hallelujah and baptize all ethnic people, groups, and nations. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now you're starting to see why things are being said. And then community focus. That means we have something marketable. We cannot just stay insular in the four walls of the church and have people transferring from one church to the next. But we got to get out into our community and be a salt and light unto the world and help people in the place of their need. Can we say it? The focus again. Somebody say kingdom minded, discipleship oriented, and community focused. So when we out there doing brown bag, when we are raising funds to get flip flops, we are putting something on their feet, but we're also setting the gospel of peace, amen, and hallelujah, and being on with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to go into the world that somebody might be saved because quite simply we're fishermen and women. Somebody say amen. amen. Next slide. Matthew 4 and 19 says, Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Look at somebody and say, You're going to be a fisherman of men and women. Y'all not saying that great. You're going to be a fisherman of men. Amen. But the key thing is Jesus is saying, Follow me. When Jesus stated this, he was walking by the Sea of Galilee and he picked Simon and Andrew and he told them to follow me. And when you look at that word, follow me, what he means is, I want you to follow the same path that I'm walking in as my disciples. In other words, I'm asking you to do what I have been doing. I need you to follow the same path. Let's review the scriptures and see what it declares unto us. Because Jesus taught this parable beside the Sea of Galilee. Amen. And some call the Sea of Galilee also the Sea of Tiberias. 
And what I like about it is the Sea of Galilee has been renowned for its fish from the ancient times. In the Sea of Galilee, how many know they had 18 different types of species of fish that was indigenous to the lake of the Sea of Galilee? And they were normally in three main groups. Sardines, how many like sardines? Amen, hallelujah. I remember when we was in Lagos, Nigeria, they said, we're gonna give you some sardines, remember? Amen. And how many know how you how many how many big do you think the sardine is? Are you when you go you got that little sardine, right? So I said, child, this ain't gonna feed nobody. You gonna give us this little bit of sardine. But the sardines out of Lagos was like this. Amen. I said, what kind of sardine is that? I ain't never that ain't gonna fit in no can. Amen. So you had sardines, you had biney, and you had musk. Amen. So when you look at the musk fish, you gonna know something about the musk fish. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's certain characteristics of the musk fish. When winter comes, the musk were tropical fish. They were congregate in groups of shoals in the northern part of the lake where they were attracted to the warm water. So there was a spring that would run into the lake and because of the warm water in the lake, these fish will be attracted to the deep. But what happens is the fishermen knew that this attraction was fatal to the fish. Why? Because it offers the fishermen now an opportunity to catch them in groups. It was probably here that Jesus was pointing to this particular lake and their knowledge of the fish that dwells in this lake that Peter was told to let down his net, let his net, and he made a successful haul after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Tell someone, know your fish. And the musk fish, some declare, is tilapia. Mmm. Lord have mercy. Anybody ate tilapia before? Yes, I said, but of course. <laughs> also in the spring. The musk will couple off and they will lay their eggs on the bottom of the lake. And after fertilization, the parents take the eggs into their mouths for three weeks until they hatch. And then they will watch over them for a few days. And to prevent their offsprings from coming back home again, coming back into their mouth, the parent will take pebbles Hallelujah. And put it in their mouth so that the home is not so comfortable anymore. Am I talking to somebody here? And they will swallow coins with pebbles. And many coins have been found in the musk of the in the mouth of the fish. And this is probably what happened when, when Peter said, Well, who's gonna pay the taxes? Jesus had a fish come and he took the tax money out of the mouth of the fish. Tell me, God ain't bad. Am I talking to somebody here? So the must would use trouble to force their offspring out of their comfort zone. Sometimes, and maybe most of the time, we have to wait till trouble comes to force our fish into the net. Some people will never come to Jesus unless trouble comes into their life. Am I talking to somebody? How many came to Jesus because of trouble? Amen? How many was in the church, left the church, and came back because trouble drove you into the church? I know I'm not talking about it. The divorce got me here. The trouble, the marriage trouble got me here. The financial trouble got me here. Amen. Some of the things that got me here. Amen. Has not always been I was blessed and highly favored. Trouble drove me into the safety net of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I used to hear that saying, I wasn't always saved. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Amen. What got you saved? Sometimes home and what you was doing became uncomfortable for you. Don't be alarmed when your fish is in trouble. Trouble has a way of driving the fish in the net. Sometimes being uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and being lost. Uh, you know, hallelujah. Will bring people into the net. Pray for sensitivity. That you learn and discern what is troubling them so that you can help them from a net of trouble to a net of safety. You gotta ask yourself some questions. Are you a safety net to those in trouble? Are you a safety net? When somebody's in trouble, do they look for you? What do you have to offer? <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Will you walk the same path as Jesus? And you might say, well, what's so big about this fish? Amen. Next slide, sir. Amen. What is the symbol of the fish? Uh, the fish is the oldest, notice this Christian symbol. The fish is the oldest Christian symbol. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Greek word for fish is, is uh, Lord, I can't even say that word. Istus. And I'm saying it, somebody say it for me. I did a good job. Praise God. Amen. And some of you might say, well, he pronounced it wrong because this is how you say it in the Greek. But I'm saying it in the Ebonic translation of Dr. Michael Giddens. It's us. There you go. Which translates to Jesus, Son of God, Savior. You see it in art. You see it in Christian literature. You see it on mosaics. You see it in churches. You see it on the wall. You see it in paintings. You see it in catacombs of Rome. You see it on glasses. You see it on cups. You see it in monuments. You see it on all parts of the Roman world. You see this symbol of the fish, which means Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. A lot of times if, when, the, when the Christians were being persecuted, they knew which house to go into because of the symbol. Where is the symbol on your house? Are you a safety net? It was a code for Christ in order to avoid arrest and execution by the Roman authorities. So when a picture of a fish appeared outside a Roman home, it meant that the Lord's Supper will be observed that night. And that's so special fish because it's a symbol of Jesus Christ of God's Savior. Amen. And the gospel then is the best fish story ever told. The gospel that caught the fish not to enslave the fish, but to set the fish free. Jesus died to be the world's safety net, but the fish must be drawn into the net. Hopelessness, fear, people are dealing with uncertainty, people are dealing with anxiety and judgment and brokenness and looking for purpose, looking for meaning, looking for value, uh, trying to have an abundant life, making a difference in this world. And the, God, and the pull of eternity, what is going to happen after I die, drives people into the safety net of Jesus. And you might ask, well, what's the net? When the people see you, and they see your love, and they see your joy, and they see your faith, you are the bait. When they see you, they should not, they should want him. Ask yourself another question. When was the last time you told someone your fish story? Because your fish story is your testimony. Somebody say amen. Are you with me? Amen. I know I ain't up here hooping and hollering. Amen. But I like to I like to hoop and holler when I know what I'm hooping and hollering about. Amen. And the next slide, there's tactics. You got to, there are methods in catching fish. There are methods. There are three different methods. You can spare the fish, you can cast your net, and sister Caesar, you can cast a drag net. Amen. So when we talk about spearing the fish, sometimes when we are trying to catch our fish, when we are trying to catch them for the gospel, we got to spear them. In other words, in other words, we ain't got time to go through the whole gospel of John. Time is too short to wait any longer. You got to tell them the cold hard fact. If you don't get your life together right now with God, you want to pay the price of hellfire. You, sometimes you got to snatch the fish. Sometimes you got to snatch folk from hell to point them to heaven. Some fish got to be snatched out of the fire. In other words, you got to say, make a decision. What you waiting on? You done heard enough about God. Get your life together. Lord have mercy. And then you got to cast your net. And a net was a smaller net, a casting net, that the fishermen used to drop over the fish. And in order to do this, uh, Minister V, they had to dive in the water. They had to secure the end of the net to subtract the fish. So that's why they would jump in the water. They would use this net and drop it over the fish and then close the net, hallelujah, at the bottom. Amen. In order to do that, you have to know exactly where they live. That means you have to observe them. But all the, and they had to this robe to jump in the sea. Some of the fish you're trying to catch will be caught in the net of the gospel if you disrobe. 
If you be transparent enough to let them know that you are at one time just as foul and lost as them, but Jesus came into my life. Anybody know that? Clean me up. Wash all the stench of my life away and made me whole. Amen? They had to ease up on the fish. Some of us are too busy trying to get people to come to church. Get people to Jesus. Wait for the right time. Meaning they were not stand offish. They were not distance. But they were near the fish. Some people that you're trying to reach for the gospel, you need to develop a relationship with people before you drop the net. Get to know where they are. Get to know something about them. Amen. Lastly, in accordance with this parable, you can cast a drag net. And a drag net with a much larger net. It was a wide net, Sister um, Charmaine. It was weights on the bottom of the net to be dragged on the bottom of the sea. And it had floats on the top to ensure that they knew the location of the net. But to ensure this net was strong, they built up this net will be a wall. That will catch everything from top to bottom. So think of this drag net. There's a wall from the top of the sea to the bottom of the sea. With weights on it. With floats on the top so they knew where it was. Amen. And when you use a drag net, you are not pacific in what you caught. Anything in the way of the net was caught. So they had to trap the fish. That means this is like a revival. That you got to catch everything. This is like the church. Catch everything. Catch everybody. Let Jesus sort them out. We must tell them Jesus and let Jesus clean them up. Hallelujah. And let Jesus do the work. Amen. Nowadays, we want to have litmus test so who can come into church? You don't look like me. You don't talk like me. You don't walk like me. Amen. You don't believe like me. No. Come on into church. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is big enough to talk to you not only your ears, but talk to your heart. This church is welcoming to anybody. And I mean anybody. Does it mean we're going to agree with you? No. But we're going to love you. We're going to respect you. We're going to treat you just like we treat everybody else. And we can disagree with you. Amen. And we will tell you in love. Amen. Amen. Somebody say cast a wide net. And we wonder why ain't nobody coming to church. Because we cast so many barriers keeping them to coming to church. Hallelujah. You don't go in the hospital and they first say clean you up. They fix your wound and then they clean you up. And then they let you recuperate. But here, no, you got to come this way. No, you don't. You can come in a three-piece suit. You can come, you can come and, 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 and dress down, whatever you want. We are more concerned with Jesus and that you clothe with him than what the clothes you wear. Just wear clothes. That's right, come with some more. Just don't, don't be coming up here. Loose share. Showing all your morning glory. They'll straighten it out. Because I might say, what? I can come in there, child. I'm going to show you some fish. <laughs> so when you look at it, this is the seventh parable that Jesus has told in Matthew 13. And it compares the kingdom of heaven to a net that was let down into a lake so that a great catch of fish could be hauled in. So the fishermen pulled the full net to shore and sorted out the fish, collecting the good ones in baskets and throwing the bad ones away. So Jesus is using what people would be familiar with during his time to present a spiritual truth about what is going to happen when Jesus comes back again. Jesus is saying that this sorting represents not fishermen on a shore, but an angelic separation of the wicked from the righteous at the end of this age. This separation then will occur when Jesus returns to establish his kingdom on earth. Amen. And who's going to do it? God is going to send his angels to sort out. That's why you ain't got to worry about if somebody's hypocrite. You ain't got to worry about if somebody's fake. God going to know it. God knows how to separate. Amen. And I believe that when the presence of the Lord is high and anointing is high, God will convict in touch. That's why I don't worry about. I don't worry about, oh, they ain't doing this. You keep coming here, something's going to happen. Not because we got anything together, but because of the spirit of God and the presence of God, the anointing still breaks yokes. Every time. 
And sometimes there's a process. Between the dropping as it hot to always my best and highly favorite, there's sometimes a process. Your pastor ain't just come up here for a minute. I would dun 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 Yes, I would. Anybody say get down? I said, on in. All you want to do, that was me. Mm -hmm. That's right. But God had, God knows how to draw you in. Because he knows the fish that you're taking. So either your pastor would prophesy in the club. God would mess up my whole flow. My jam come on, Ella, and I'm about to get down, and the Lord would drop in my spirit in the club. Talking about Jesus. How can I get on the floor after that? Spent about twenty-five dollars. Messed up. I couldn't do nothing. Couldn't get no drink. The Lord shut it down. And I would keep trying to go. It would snow. It would rain. <laughs> y'all, you know, see, I'm being authentic. And y'all might say that's crazy. You the pastor. You bishop. That's it. You shouldn't say that. But do you know how many people I say with my foolishness? I didn't save nobody. You're absolutely right. Now, that don't mean you stay in that. You got to grow out of that. What I'm trying to tell you is sometimes we don't always come in cleaned up as we should. But if you stay close to Jesus, you will be clean. Somebody say amen. I'm a, you can take a screenshot of this. I'm not going to go through every one, but what are the angels? I just wanted to share this with you. Can you go to the next slide? These are the things that the angels do. Amen? Go screenshot that. Because you got a lot of things people talking about what angels do and not praying to the angels. If that was a lie, I'm praying to no angel. They're ministry spirits just like me. Amen? Angels carry out God's judgment. Angels serve God. Angels praise God. Angels are messengers of God. Angels protect God's people. Angels do not marry. Angels do not die. Angels will be judged by people. The saints of God are going to judge angels. So how am I praying to something I'm going to judge? Amen. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Angels encourages us. Angels who sin were thrown into hell. They already bound up. They're angels who are trapped in hell waiting for the final judgment. Angels are holy. Angels are in the presence of God. And angels in Revelation 22 and 8 and 9 should never be worshipped. Somebody say amen. Amen. They're ministries ministering spirits to help us walk in the path of God. But they're not to be worshipped. Somebody say amen. 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 Next slide. Did y'all get it? Y'all got it? Y'all got the pictures? Good. Amen. So what does this mean? When we look at this, we are to be fishermen and fisherwomen. Not for creatures with scales, but fishermen of men and women in our lakes. Where's your lake? It's your family. It's your community. It's your job. Amen. When you got an opportunity to share your good fish story, you have to tell them about it. You ain't got to be deep in John 3 and 16 says, in Romans 10, 8 and 9, and Jesus said, in Romans 10 and 13, and everyone that call on the name of the Lord die. <laughs> no. That's good preaching, right? Amen. You saw how I did that sitting down? That means you can turn it on and turn it off. If it don't change you, it don't mean nothing. Amen. So that means I got to trap everything in order that some will be saved. I cannot just target the fish that do not fight back. 
Sometimes your lake got fish that fight back. Sometimes the fish that God put in your way is the fish that you don't like. You can't, I can't stand that person. Why they keep coming around you? Because they trying, you are the bait. And they trying, they know there's something in you. Amen. Hallelujah. They know they nasty and they know they want to get well. Hallelujah. You're the bait. You're wondering what's in your lake. I can't leave them. I can't get away from them. Why do they keep calling me? Amen. Because they see light in the midst of darkness. And you want to tell them off, but Jesus in you won't let them. And you sit there and you counsel them. And if they try to take your job, they backstab you, they lie on you, and you can't get away from them. That's your leg. You got some family members you don't want to and let them know it's your birthday and you having a birthday party because you don't want them to come. <laughs> I ain't telling you. You having Thanksgiving at your house? Um, 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 Thanksgiving coming up? I don't know. You know you done went shopping. You just went shopping. You done had your grocery list. You just hope they don't come. <laughs> Stay in your behind home. And they always got money for the plane ticket. The one that you want to come never ain't got no money. The one you don't want to come, they got the money. That's the leg. You've been trying to quit that job, but God said, no, you ain't leaving until you tell this boss about Jesus. Somebody say amen. You can't just catch the neck of you what you're comfortable with. What's in your favorite cup? What comes in my preferred packaging? Amen? You understand that all fish need to be cleaned up, and that is called grace. And we need Jesus, the fish. And if we don't tell, then we won't grow. If you don't tell others who you love, do you really love them enough to be out in the open concerning your relationship with them? Them. Don't tell me you love me and then you're going to keep my love on the secret. It's no download loving in the gospel. I love Jesus, but I'm going to keep it between us. Anything you're afraid to reveal, <laughs> hallelujah, anything you're trying to conceal, maybe you don't need to be with it or maybe you need, don't need to do it. I know a lot of people come to us, Pastor, should I do this? Well, why are you hiding? Yeah. <laughs> that should be a signal right there. If you hiding something and you're afraid of it, then you got to ask yourself, is this what God want me to do? Now, yes, there are times God will have you not reveal something. But let God tell you don't reveal it. Don't you make the decision. That's why I don't understand this generation. Back in the day when I was getting good sitting in and one work, one foot in the in the church and one foot in the world, I ain't let everybody know. Right? Here they on Facebook. You on Facebook. And then here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here, you can't move. Can't even move now in church. Can't lift your hand, but they're gloved. You'd be surprised who was watching you. Your character is the greatest thing. People watch what you say and they watch what you do. They watch who you associate with. So that when you go now fishing, you don't be hypocritical. And you understand that because of Jesus, Jesus is with me because I cannot save one soul. Your words are not going to save one soul. It's the Holy Ghost who's going to convict. The Holy Ghost is going to draw them. And your love is the bait. That's why Jesus says the two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart and what? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's your bait. Look at somebody and say, I love you. I love you. Amen. That is the bait. Amen. Next slide. There was a priest. Amen. Woo. Lord have mercy. Child, I'm tired. 
and I'm sweating. I do need some water. So the priest, the story about a priest, he said, who spent a fruitless day fishing, picked up three fat fish in the market. And he said, before you wrap them up, toss one to me one by one. That way I'll be able to tell the Monsignor that I caught them and I'll be speaking the truth. In other words, speak the truth and cast a wise net. Catch somebody, catch anybody, catch a wide net with the net of the gospel to deliver them from the bait of sin and lead them to Jesus. Let him sort them out, but cast a wild net until it's full. I'm going to make a challenge to the members of this church and our supporters. I believe that in six months we can get to 100 members. I got one clap. Amen? Because I'm trying to figure out if I'm challenging what I got to do so you don't want to clap yet. Amen? But I believe we can get to 100 members in six months. And you might say, well, how can that happen? One, if you invite. Two, if you share. Most importantly, if you pray. Most importantly, if you desire to be used. Most importantly, if you be proactive. If you be kingdom-minded. Hallelujah. Then you will be fish and fisher women. How many or in the net of Jesus will be healed and set free and delivered if you cast your net? How many people will be free from addictions and worry and anxiety and judgment and re irreconcilable relationships and unforgiveness and confusion and spiritual oppression and hellfire if you just work like a fisherman and cast your net? Because to work like a fisherman, to work like a disciple, to work like a believer, to work like a saint, to work like a child of God. Amen. The fisherman is all of us. It's not just the pastor, not just the leaders, not just the evangelist, but all of us have a net story, a fish story. What you going to do with yours? All of us can be a fisherman. We can get to 100 members in six months if you share. That's the challenge. Will you do it? I don't hear that. I hear amen. Yes. Will you do it? Amen. That means you got to start inviting somebody. Yes. If you don't know what to say, send them to the Facebook page. If you don't know what to say, pray. Just tell them what Jesus done for you. Amen. And if they want need to come to church, come to church. If you need a church home, join the church. But let's do our part. Let's be like the fishermen. Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you a fisherman of men. Disciples got to work. These are the questions that we ask. What is this talking about? What does this mean? Who is this talking about? And why is this as important? Because that's what advances the kingdom. And I just want to show you some pictures that shows us how Hallelujah. What this small church is doing to advance the kingdom of God. Show the pictures. I wanted to show the pictures and I'll explain it to you. Amen. They're from Pakistan. Do you see that? That's what casting a net looks like. That's in Punjabi, Pakistan. That's Evangelist Amal, who I've been doing Bible studies for these believers in Pakistan for a month and a half. Somebody say amen. amen. That's casting a wide net. And when I proclaim the gospel, he has to translate it into Urdu. I don't even know what he's saying. That's what casting a wide net doing. We're not asking you to do something we have not done. Y'all need to give God some praise. Did you hear what I'm saying? The word of God is going to Pakistan. Hit the next slide. You see what they're holding up? They're holding up Bibles that they never had. How did they get those Bibles? Because this church donated funds to Pakistan so that they can have those Bibles that they're reading right now. That's Pakistan.
casting a wide net. They don't look like us, they don't talk like us, we don't know who they are, that's the drag net. And we thank God for those who have donated funds to get 20 Bibles in the hands of these Pakistanian believers. Look at them. And that's what I see Monday morning. I got to get up at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning to do a Bible study on WhatsApp. Next slide. There's a goat. Lord have mercy. These are the Bibles. Go, next slide. There they go, holding them up. There's more of them, and that's what they do. Notice they ain't got no chairs. Notice they ain't got all the strobe lights. No, they ain't got all the smoke. Notice they ain't got the choir, the choir dressed up in robes. But they got the words. And they're hungry. And when I minister to them, they be hallelujah. They know how to say that. And when they prayed for us, the power of God dropped from where they were and touched us. And they're praying for us. And they're thanking us for what they're doing. So when your hearers ask for an offering for Pakistan, get this in your mind. And you might say this don't mean nothing, but maybe that little girl right there that you gave a Bible to in 20 years might be the greatest evangelist in Pakistan and turn that nation around and drive our idols and drive up all the demonic forces and she'll remember there was a church in America that sent money for a Bible and I read that Bible and it turned my life around. That's the kingdom minded. We go into Ghana, kingdom minded. Been in Nigeria, kingdom minded. Been in Rwanda, kingdom minded. Been in every jail you can imagine in New York, kingdom minded. Catching every fish in the nursing homes, in the seniors, on the streets. This is what the church is about. It's kingdom. So we don't just talk about it, we walk about it. But we need help with the net. It's 15 men to a boat. Could imagine if we could just get 15 of us. And you might say, well, they talking to them in person. No, Facebook, you, got, you can share. Some of you share every type of foolishness, but I check, you don't share nothing about your church. And then wondering, well, we need to grow. What you doing? What you doing? We ain't just French. We is us. I know you know somebody that they need to save. And if you got an enemy, that's the one. Can we stand? Can we stand? Can we stretch our hands? You don't have to go there. Can we just stretch our hands to this picture? Because they're getting ready to baptize 15 souls in the name of Jesus. Did you hear what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? I said they're getting ready to baptize 15 souls. Because he said, Papa, Mama, y'all all right? We got to have 15 souls. So they're going to need, we're going to take an offering probably next week to help them baptize 15 souls. Yeah, we got to fight to baptize two. 15. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless them. Bless their children. Bless their evangelists. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, let them be safe. Because a lot of them are not showing their face, not because they don't want to, but because they're persecuted over there. So God bless them and cover them in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let's put our hands together and thank God for the work. Amen. The challenge in six months. We can do it with the help of God and your faithfulness. We can grow to 100. And it's not about the numbers, it's about people being transformed, people being able to do the work of the gospel, people being able to grow, people who need Jesus. Are you with us? Can we do it? We can do it? Can we do it? If you're on Facebook, say we can do it.
Amen. Hallelujah. This is a new work. God brought us down here to Atlanta for a reason, and that's for us all to work together. Amen. This is not a one man shit. This is not my church. This is not Pastor Val's church. This is our church. Amen. It belongs to God, and we are his people. Amen. So we have to take ownership of the work that God has given us. So if we are what? Kingdom minded. Somebody say what? Kingdom minded. Discipleship. And that's our vision. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, um, Justin, play something here, brother. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do some. Do some. And we thank God for this, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. When you need help, God will send you help. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just want to pray, and I want to lift up three things. One, if you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you're in the sanctuary here or whether you are on Facebook Live, we want to offer you Jesus. And what we were saying is that we have nothing to offer, but we can point you to Jesus Christ. The doors of the church are now open. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we're asking is if you do not, if you have never given your life to Jesus, you might say, what does that mean? That you have never believed in him. That he is your Lord and Savior. That means that he's delivered you from your sins. Amen. And you believe that he is the Lord of your life. The one who you're going to give control of your life to. If you never did that. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. It says that you will be saved. Healed. Delivered. Amen. Rescued. Amen. So if there's anybody here under the sound of my voice, if you have never said, Lord, come into my life, don't worry about if you don't have the verbiage right or the wording right, but if you have never opened up your heart to say, Lord, come on in, then come to the altar. And if you're on Facebook, just say, I need Jesus in my life. I need to be saved. Uh, we have our pastors. We have our ministers on Facebook Live. This is a hybrid church, so we're not just here in Atlanta. Amen. But we are everywhere we have a member. That's a church. Amen. That's kingdom minded. Amen. And they will help you. Is there anybody? Hallelujah. There might be some that, you know what, I need to rededicate. I re need to rededicate my life to Jesus. I know him, but I strayed. Anybody been there? I know I strayed at times. Amen. There might be someone who's saying, you know what, I got to come back home. I got I to gotta reestablish this relationship. I know he never need me, but I broke in fellowship with him. If you're here, if that's anybody, whether on Facebook or you're here today, and you just need to reestablish that relationship with the Lord, the, the altar is open. So salvation, rededication, if there's anybody on Facebook or here, come to the altar. Some of you might say, I need prayer. I'm wrestling with something. I'm struggling with something. And I need prayer. I need God to intervene. The altar is open. You might want to bring somebody to the altar. You, if somebody's on your heart, God, I pray that you save them. Amen. I'm standing in the gap. If, if, if that's you, the altar is open. Somebody say amen. And lastly, if you need a church home, if you need a place to belong, whether in the sanctuary or whether you're on Facebook Live, again, I don't care where you are, we got members in Florida, we got people in New York, amen, and we got supporters all over the place, amen. This is a, this is a place where we're growing together. So if there's anybody here, I need salvation, I need to rededicate, I need prayer, amen, I need a church home. Four things. If that's you, the altar is open. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Facebook, just let somebody know. Let somebody know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, thank you, brother. Come on.
or you need a church home, the doors is open. That's what the Lord is looking for, just saying yes. Somebody say Stretched out long. 
So, Father, we thank you, God, for all those under the sound of my voice, all those on Facebook, all those who are going to be watching Facebook, that this message will go unto them and that we will start to see soul after 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 soul give their life to Jesus. So have your way now as we get ready to leave this place. Let it not leave your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, every heart say, amen, amen. Bless you, Facebook family, until we see you again on Wednesday at noon. Make sure that you greet one another on a lot of them before they go. Amen. Show love to somebody else. Amen. God be with you. God strengthen you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.